All right, well, it's just us, the survivors, the hardcore. Do you, do you guys want to hear some jokes from me? Sure. Okay, yeah. sure, cool, yeah. Well, we started out with great energy in this room. The place was packed. Um, I don't know if it's what I did. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit, we'll find. I mean, the com- I mean, the comics, they all left, so they could go sign up, at, line up at the mothership like three hours early, which I think is a little silly. No, I'll get on the list. That's okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> I already did the thing about cigarettes. <laughs> okay. It's time to be entertaining, Derek. It's go time. Get your head in the game. Get it together. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a volleyball coach. Yeah, I did play volleyball. It, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Well, it was my fault for caving to pressure from my mom. Which, I look like a guy who would do that. Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. Um, <laughs> just, I'm a jello man. Don't leave any bruises, it's fine. As long as I don't see it's cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I, did, I did play volleyball, because my mom was on the national team. Really amazing achievement. She was, uh, she was on the national team for volleyball. Would have gone to the 76 Olympics if uh, Jimmy Carter hadn't canceled it. She still won't shut up about it. Um, but, but now she's living with her parents. <sighs> Feels like a nice comeuppance, right? <laughs> My mom is the Uncle Rico of moms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I could spike a volleyball. I could I could dig it. <laughs> you think I could hit a volleyball over the mountains, boy? <laughs> All right, that's because I do look like Napoleon Dynamite. That's very appropriate, you know. Oh. Um, let's see. Um, I'm a substitute teacher. That's the right reaction. Don't make any noise. I do it for the money. I send all the kids to the bathroom when I can. I write passes like a motherfucker. I just want the job to be easy. You know, if some kid's giving me shit, I say like, hey, if you want to leave early, that's cool. You know, <laughs> like, you're all right, man. And, uh, you know, I, I don't care if he gets cut. But most of them don't have the balls to get caught, which is really frustrating because I would just like to send them out. You know, I, I offer to send them to the library. And I offer to send them to the moon. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's a black and white TV reference. See, I have old parents. My 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 mom was 36 and my dad was 48 when I was born. Um, the math checks out on autism for sure. The older your dad is, yeah. <laughs> The dustier the cum, <laughs> the dustier the jeans. I had. <laughs> yep, he got me with that one. <laughs> Good one, Dad. <laughs> he, uh, he didn't know. Uh, it's all right. Let's see. I am autistic, but my dad's into model trains, not me. Uh, <laughs> I think he probably is too. You know, he, he's. Uh, What was it? A rocket scientist. That's right. Yeah, that's he's a he also um, lacked some social skills. But I also, but I also felt like uh, well, he didn't have like too too many like work friends. So when my parents got divorced, I would go with him to the California Science Center every weekend, and we watch an IMAX movie and see the same exhibits. But I look back at those times fondly, even though like half of the time it was boring. It did, but we found something that we both liked enough to do it. Uh, I was dating my dad for years. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was the, maybe the only anchor. I'm glad that he's still around. I'm glad that he didn't off himself. I'm glad that he's, because he's living his best life now. He has uh, another wife who's also 12 years younger than him. Okay. <laughs> at, this, at 77, it doesn't matter so much. You know, she's 65, but he's living in Kauai. Way to go, Dad. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, just careful. The, the waves are strong there. He's okay. Um, he knows how to survive. Hmm. Um, and think, speaking of, I've got to send him money for my car payment. He was nice. <laughs> he was nice enough to pick up my car payment, uh, but so I wouldn't have to pay interest. But then, but then. I, I need to see if Zelle can do recurring payments so that 
so that I don't miss it and then have to talk to him like that instead of being able to just call up like, oh, what's new? <laughs> How's the sun? Um, yeah, instead I could say, hey, what's new? This is how your son is. No, it's dumb. That was dumb. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was honest right there. <laughs> but I also like the support. Uh, let's see. Um, you guys into politics? No? Yes? Yes? All right, then you'll love this. It's, uh... <laughs> you know... Sleepy Joe, what did I tell you? Can't even ride a bicycle. How is he going to ride America into a great sunset? This is Donald Trump, your best president ever. Still your president, don't believe what they tell you. All right, that was all right at the beginning, there we go. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, this is my Joe Biden impression. <laughs> Poor guy, he just belongs on a porch with his grandkids. Give him his rocking chair. Stop giving him amphetamines. He doesn't belong in those press conferences where he's clutching his pad folio, looking scared that everybody's looking at him. He doesn't know why. And then he just comes out, he just comes out with phrases that he remembers from when he was a young man. Like, don't let the blacks vote. Like, no, Joe, no. That's not what we're doing right now. See, he's like, yeah, yeah, he just gets his, he gets his thoughts downloaded by the DNC. Yeah, they've got a little flash drive port right in the side of his head. They cover it up nicely with the little hair he has left. Um, poor Joe. I actually feel sorry for him. I don't think he wants to be president. Nah, I, I, I wanted to be president for a long time, but I think that's because I craved some kind of control over my environment. Um, yeah, anytime I meet someone who wants to be president and there's no apparent way that they could feasibly do that, they're not involved in politics or anything, I just know it's a control freak. So I just let them steer the conversation for a while while I get high, and then I just get to go for a ride. That's it. You know, that's, that's one of my solutions. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, um, don't hang out with people who want to be president. They're no fun. I was a buzzkill for a long time. I was that kid who would say, like, well, you know, actually, the mass of Mars is three quarters that of Earth, and some shit like that. And so, you know, hmm. let's see. Yeah, most people who say, well, actually, don't really know. They just heard it somewhere. Um, yeah, if, as a matter of fact, if you ask yourself, 90% of the time when you when, when an opinion comes out of your brain and it's headed towards your mouth, if you stop that opinion right at your brain stem and you shunt it back up there and you ask you, yourself, where did I hear hear this? It would be some guy sometime, you know, it's a guy like there were so many opinions that, that, that I realized were just shit that I heard in church from people who were being just Yeah, people what what's the word? People who were just being wantonly reckless with their words, and I trusted them. Um, that's, anyways, you guys know, you guys know. Oh, any of you fuck with church? Did any of you fucking church fuck with church? But, uh, yeah, no, no, okay, it'd be, you know, it'd be kind of fun, maybe one time, yeah, no, no, nobody, so, okay, so we're safe here, that's cool, yeah. I was part of a charismatic healing denomination for a time, though, you know, like the people who will like see that you have a cast and then ask to pray for you to see if it'll get better. Um, hmm, a lot of awkward. <laughs> In retrospect, a lot of those a lot of those circumstances were very awkward. But um, I was saved from it by autism. Really have it. I do. I told. Yeah, I already told you that. It's all right. There are a lot of, there are probably, you know, there are a lot of com comics who claim it, but I have the papers to prove it. I'm not trying to say that I'm better than them. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, let's, you know, like, and, and then you say stuff like, you know, like, thank you, Father, bless this time. Thank you, Daddy, God, my Father, God. Um, Holy Spirit, come upon him. Which, yeah, we just didn't know we were getting jizzed on by the Holy Ghost this whole time. Just give me that spirit come. Spirit come, Halloween. Now I like Halloween a lot more. We're free associating. This is fun. Great. I just went to Hot Topic yesterday. First time in my life. 
but I saw that they had a black and red striped t-shirt, so now I can dress like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, and I'm so excited to do that outside of the Halloween context. Just every day, red shoes, black pants, black and red striped t-shirt. I got four of them. I'm ready for this. Uh, <laughs> I actually got two, but you know, four sounds more, more committed. I considered getting four because on the website they were $13.52 each. See, I remember the numbers, autistic. But then when I went, when I went to the store, they were 10 bucks each, and they gave me a 30% discount for being a first-time customer. It's like I could rack up anyways, it's alright. Four for $28, but no, I went for the I went for two for 14. I think that's more reasonable. Um, but next, I'm gonna get next. I'm gonna get a, a, a red shirt with blue pants and what and blue shoes, so I can be Bart Simpson. I can't wait. I can't wait to just be a comic book character, comic 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 strip, comic book. What are they called? What are they called? Animation, cartoon. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I can't wait to be a cartoon character. This is going to be fun. See, but I think it might be just another way of trying to escape because when I was a kid, I used to, uh, well, uh, my, my lifestyle as a comedian actually works out quite nicely because I'm, I'm used to like 2, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. bedtimes because when I was a kid, my parents thought I was doing what I should be doing, but I would stay up all night with my, with my siblings and play video games, right? And, uh, and so I'm used to staying up late and then having to get up early and yawn my way through everything. Because uh, school wasn't a chance. Anyway, I don't know. That's personal. That's dumb. I don't need to talk about that. But what I was talking about, wait, 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 wait. yes, is that the video games, the video games were just, were just a way of pretending that I was living a different and better life. Like, I would, I mean, even, even hauling cargo through a, a fictional solar system and making money as, <laughs> as a passage, like, <laughs> as, a, as a space passenger pilot was more appealing than, well, okay, I don't need to tell you about my, my sister. She made me afraid a lot. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's going to be in two weeks. Come back in two weeks and come join us at Madrone. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Put your hands together for this place. Keep it going for your bar staff. Keep it going for all the other comics that you see. Even though all of them fuckers except AJ Valentine already left. Bye, AJ. Anyways, this has been the Madrone No Press Open Mic. Thank you so much for coming. We'll, we'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.